There is a lot of history around steak tartare. Originating from Slavic regions of raw meat with tartar sauce to a French interpretation in the 1980s which was just meat with egg yolk. I'm going to show you guys how to make steak tartare in two ways primarily. A very very classic preparation and then kind of like a kitchen sink preparation. Like everything you could possibly put in a steak tartare. Now for those of you following a carnivore diet and me personally, I really do prefer just beef, salt, and egg yolk. And not even salt, just raw beef and raw egg yolk to me is delicious. But when you take it and you spread it on bread, it's a way different dish. So keep in mind the level of seasoning in this meat. If you make a steak tartare recipe like normal and you put a spoonful of it in your mouth, it's probably going to be over seasoned because it's meant to be spread on toast or bread in a small amount. So I'm not going to hold back on the seasoning in this for the sake of the integrity of the recipe, but keep in mind if you guys are going to just eat the tartare itself, then definitely go way lighter on the seasoning. Of all the steak tartare recipes I looked at, almost all of them had a few key ingredients. Mustard seemed to be mandatory, shallots as well, in addition to capers, then of course salt, pepper, and I have some eggs over there for egg yolk. So really, the only classic ingredients that are necessary in a steak tartare are, of course, the beef, mustard, shallot, caper, salt, pepper, egg yolk, parsley, nothing else. Now, the variations that you see on steak tartare might include things such as Worcestershire sauce, and Worcestershire sauce has anchovy and garlic in it, which I also have here, and those things are also included sometimes in tartare recipes. So by using anchovies and garlic, you can kind of replicate the flavor of Worcestershire sauce without actually using it. Uh, chili is sometimes added. Here I actually have a homemade sriracha with chili and garlic. Uh, sometimes they add lemons to steak tartare, just a little bit of lemon juice. And sometimes they even add cornichons or some pickles, which I actually don't have here. If I only show you guys one thing, it would be this. The importance of hand chopping the beef fresh. And yeah, I love regular ground beef, but this is what makes the difference between a good steak tartare and an amazing steak tartare. Now, the reason I like tenderloin is mainly because it's really easy to cut and it doesn't have a lot of flavor, which helps pick up the other flavors. And, and same with carpaccio. Little snack for me. The easiest way to dice this, uh, the French call it a brunoise, a very fine dice. Although I don't know if I will call mine a brunoise. Just make fairly thin, as thin as you can really, slices. And I'm going to layer these on top of each other. Alright, so after I layer those slices of beef on top of each other, I'm going to press it down. And the tenderloin is so soft it, gets, it goes flat very easily. Now what I do, is I go across with a sharp knife. Chop it one way. Okay, and I turn it the other way and I chop it the other way. Okay, so that's, that's all you really have to do for the beef. To me, that's perfect. I love that coarse texture. You could chop it finer if you want to, but that's what I like. Now, in a lot of restaurants, and the way I would personally serve it myself is, I would literally just season all of the meat with salt and pepper, and I'd serve it with an egg yolk, and then I would serve all of these accompaniments on the side. Uh, and then the, the guests can choose whatever they like. But in this video, we're just gonna do two classic takes on the steak tartare. So we're gonna do one, the original recipe, with the simple ingredients, and then we're gonna throw everything in it. So. This is going to be the first recipe, and I have a scale here just to, you know, so we get an accurate metric of how much of each thing we're adding. And this is, this is more of a taste test. This is not going to be a full portion or serving. So here I have 50 grams of beef. To 50 grams of beef, I want to add 10 grams of mustard. Here I have an old-fashioned mustard. Uh, I also have another one of these that's not whole grain. The only important thing, uh, and the reason I like this mustard is 
because the only ingredients are mustard, vinegar, water, and salt. That's it, nothing else. I'm gonna go with five grams of mustard for 50 grams of beef. Now we have to add two grams of shallots, and I like using a grater because to get shallots this fine, I really don't have the knife skills to do it. That's about two grams, that's plenty. So two grams of shallots. And you wanna add about two grams of capers. Now, add our pepper, a few cracks of pepper. Just a tiny pinch of sea salt. And then here I have the parsley. Parsley is always added. So I'm just gonna mix this together and I'm gonna let the flavors sit for a few minutes uh, just to marry together. Let the salt season the meat a little bit. So there's classic beef tartare number one. Steak tartare number two. We're gonna do the exact same thing except we're going to add everything to this. So we're gonna add the ingredients that we previously added in addition to other ingredients. Five grams of mustard, two grams of shallots, about two grams of capers, parsley, pepper, salt. And now is where we get some differences. Now we're gonna add a little bit of anchovy. This is gonna add some umami, some real savoriness to the dish. And now we're gonna add garlic and chili. Uh, there's garlic in here, there's some chili in here, a little bit of honey in here, so I don't have to chop up some garlic because it's in here. And this is essentially just sriracha, just homemade sriracha, so put a little bit of that in there. It's very potent, so I don't want to add too much. So again, that's chili and garlic. And now I'm just going to squeeze a tiny bit of lemon juice over here. Just a little bit. Now I'm going to mix this up. And I will let these sit for a few minutes while I clean up this mess I made. Oh, also what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna season uh, the plain meat with salt and pepper. And I'm gonna try the plain one and compare it to this too. So we'll just have a regular version that I would normally eat. All right, moment of truth. Which tartare is the best? So first I'm just gonna have some plain beef with uh, salt and pepper. Oh, I almost forgot the egg yolk. So I have some duck eggs here. Duck eggs are a lot richer than regular eggs. That's why I like them. I get these uh, at a local farm or a local Asian market. So what I like doing is just, I, put, I sprinkle a little more salt on the egg yolk too. I love this, it's amazing. Every time I love it. Now I'm gonna try the classic beef tartare, the one with the mustard, shallot, capers, and parsley. This is pretty good. I've had a lot of steak tartare and it's just really classic, done well with good ingredients. Not over seasoned, which is very important. A Little bit of kick from the mustard and shallot. Now we're gonna have the kitchen sink beef tartare. And this has the shallot, the capers, the mustard, the parsley, in addition to chili, garlic, anchovy and lemon juice. So just about everything you could add to a steak tartare that you see on a restaurant menu is in this. I don't really like it. I didn't think I would. That's unfortunate. Don't like the chili in this. The garlic gives it too much like punch. Um, the anchovy, I'm sure the anchovy is a great addition regardless and that squeeze of lemon juice is. But the chili and the garlic should probably stay out of beef tartare. Overall, you know, I think, I mean, I really just like beef tartare, salt, pepper, egg yolk. I think it's delicious. On its own especially. If you're going to spread it on bread, maybe opt for the classic recipe. So I guess we could talk about food safety a little bit. Uh, buying ground beef from the supermarket and eating it like that is not a good idea. You generally want whole cuts from high quality animals to minimize bacteria. Uh, I mean, I've been eating raw meat for six, seven years and I've not once been sick from eating raw meat. Uh, seafood, on the other hand, I have been sick from eating oysters. So as long as you're not going to like the supermarket and buying ground beef in a tube and trying to eat it raw like tartare, 
uh, you're not going to have any problems. And I, well, I do know people that do that and don't have problems. I wouldn't recommend it. So if you guys would like to support me, please just share the video. Let me know how you like this style and format. I really like exploring the origin of the recipe, what it's typically made with, how you can alter it, and almost kind of doing a little bit of like recipe research while filming the video for you guys, just to give you guys an idea of what you can do. If you guys want to check out my Amazon shop down below, uh, it has some products that I used here. If you guys want to go on my Patreon, uh, I might start doing Patreon only videos. Let me know what you guys would like to see. And if you guys want to reach out to me for one on one consultations in regards to anything from cooking to diet to health to sun exposure, uh, you can shoot me an email, frankatefano at gmail.com, or reach out to me on my website below.